Hello, welcome into Deb's Kitchen. Today I'm going to be making a simple budget friendly meal and it's called goulash. You're wondering what goulash is? Have you heard of Hungarian goulash? That is the traditional dish and the only difference is you usually make Hungarian goulash with uh, cubed steak or beef stew. We're going to make it budget friendly and we're using ground beef. These are the simple ingredients for our goulash. We're going to be using beef stock or beef broth, um, alvo uh, macaroni, I have a can of crushed tomatoes, two cans of diced tomatoes, and the directions are going to be linked in the description below, so if you want the recipe. Also, I'm using hot paprika, bay leaves, and of course, my Lori seasoning salt. I'm going to use some olive oil to fry the veggies, some Worcestershire sauce, and fresh garlic, onion, bell pepper. You can substitute minced garlic if you have it in your free, free refrigerator. So all the main starting ingredient is ground beef, and I'm using the lean. So let's get started. Okay, we're going to get our vegetables all chopped. We're starting off with one medium onion, and I'm not going to use all this garlic. I'm just going to use a couple of cloves, maybe three or four. But peel your onion, and then we're going to chop it up. Okay, make sure to take out the thicker outer skin of your onion. This is a medium onion, and as you notice, I cut off the bottom, the long stem. I left the top intact. That's going to help us to keep our onion together when we cut it up. So I'm going to cut this in half. Okay, the onion, as you can see, already has portions. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this, and we're not going to cut all the way to the stem, but you're going to take your knife and you're going to make slits here so that when you cut your onion, it will make little diced pieces. Cut it thin so you won't have thick slices. Then you just start cutting until you're all done. Okay, I have it diced, but I want them to be all small slices. So I have this knife, this I'm cutting them to more evenly cut up pieces. Then I'm going to fry them in my pan. Okay, turn your, uh, get a, a deep pan like this. Turn it up to uh, medium high. And get some oil. I'm using olive oil. Use whatever you have. And how many tablespoons you put? Let that heat up. That's two tablespoons. And meanwhile, I'm going to bring over my veggies. The onions go in first because I want to start softening them. I don't want them to be totally hard when I add my ground beef. So I'm going to put these in, let them start softening up, and do my garlic and my bell pepper. Okay, I cut off the top, and I'm going to start cutting up my bell pepper. And as you can see, this one, this bell pepper looks a little tired. But it's still good. It's not moldy. It just needs to be used. And sometimes I, my menus are based on the things I need to use right away. And in this case, it's my bell peppers. So we're going to just, I cut it in half and I'm stacking it. And I'm going to cut it in dice like my onions. If you have a chopper, go ahead and use it. I have one, but... I know everyone doesn't, so I'm trying to make it easy, accessible to any cook in any kitchen. Okay, you can see my onions nice and soft, so now we're going to add the red bell pepper. And you can use any color bell pepper you want. I have a red bell pepper, so that's what I'm using. Stir this up, and then we're going to get our garlic ready. The garlic goes in last because it burns fast, and we don't want to burn garlic. Okay, this, this whole bowl is a head of garlic. I'm using cloves. These individual ones are called cloves. I'm mashing it with my mallet because otherwise it's hard to peel. See, when you do this, the peeling just comes right off. And you don't have to, like I said, if you don't have fresh, if you don't have fresh garlic and you have this, you can certainly substitute the minced garlic. Okay, you can dice your garlic up. And little pieces minced you just make long rows and then dice it and throw in your garlic or like I said you can use this and in this case I'm using a tablespoon and throw it in it's easier for me 
Okay, just as soon as you get the garlic in, you need to get your meat ready to come in. This calls for approximately two pounds of meat, so I'm just going to cut that off. That's a five pound chip, and I'm going to squeeze this out. So I'm squeezing two pounds in here, and then I'm going to get my hand, make sure you have clean hands, but I'm going to get my handy dandy chopper, people. Once again, we will link the products we're using in the description, and this is my Pampered Chef meat chopper, and it, I love it. I use it all the time. As you can see, it easily chops up your meat without having to use a spatula to try to maneuver it. This makes short order of this, chopping your meat. Okay, I have some hot paprika. You don't have hot, any paprika is fine. I'm going to add one teaspoon. In Hungarian goulash, that is an important ingredient. But we're not making Hungarian, but I wanted to have the essence. I'm going to use two teaspoons of garlic, Laurie's garlic salt, because I love that. Then we're going to stir this up a little. This is a very easy and inexpensive dish, and I guarantee you the kids are going to love it. We grew up in a generation of people eating, uh, what do you call that, hamburger helper. So your kids will love this because if they grew up on hamburger helper, like my kids did, this is going to disappear. Okay, once your meat is just above brown, doesn't matter if there's a tiny bit pink because it's going to simmer. But once it's almost brown, we're going to drain it because we don't want the fat in here. So I'm going to drain it. So I have most of the liquid. You can see all the fat coming out. And we don't want that. So we want to keep it healthy. So we're going to pour this back into the pot. Now we're going to start adding our wet ingredients. This calls for diced tomatoes, but I'm kicking it up a little. I'm using the Raquel seasoned diced tomatoes with green chilies. And this is a 10 ounce can. I'm using two of these. So I used two cans, and now I have a 12 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. You can use the diced tomatoes if you like. I'm going to use a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. I'm getting the name down, people. You should be proud of me. I'm going to throw in a bay leaf or two. We're going to remove this when we eat it. And then beef broth. That's a star ingredient. We're adding four cups of beef broth. You can make your own if you have the concentrated. You just add the water and then add the powder to it or bouillon, and then you can use that, certainly. Case you wanted to ask that. Okay, so I'm basically using this whole carton of beef stock, and like I said, it's cooking beef stock. You can use beef broth if you like. I'm going to stir this around. See, we already have our base. Doesn't that look nice? It smells wonderful. Now we're going to add our elbow macaroni. Before I add my macaroni, I'm going to try out this broth. Uh. Spicy. It needed more pepper, garlic salt. And since I usually just eyeball it, but I'm putting in another teaspoon for you. And then I'm going to put a little bit cracked pepper. Okay, put about a teaspoon of cracked, or just black pepper. I'm using cracked pepper, but black pepper is fine. And now we're going to add our noodles. I'm going to put two cups of noodles in here. Dried elbow noodles. And this is what makes it your classic goulash. Then we're going to bring it to a boil and then turn it down to a simmer for like 20 minutes. And once it's done, we're going to shred in a cup of cheddar cheese to make it, to make it extra yummy. So I stirred that in and I'm going to let it boil for 20 minutes. Okay, I put it on medium heat and I'm going to let it come to a boil. I'm going to actually cover it so it can come to a boil faster. And as soon as it starts boiling, I'm going to time it for 20 minutes uncovered. I use a glass lid so I can see when it starts boiling. And you see it's boiling. So now we're going to set a timer for 20 minutes and check our dish. Alexa, set timer for 20 minutes. And we're going to leave it uncovered. Okay, about 10 minutes in, you want to get your 
your, your spoon and kind of run it down the bottom because we do not want our macaroni to stick. So, and you can see it's almost halfway cooked and it's boiling. So I'm actually going to turn it, if it's vigorously boiling, turn it down a tad, just a little bit. I'm putting it to just above half or medium and we'll let it finish cooking. Okay, it's 20 minutes. Looks cooked. Actually, I need to taste it to make sure the macaroni is cooked. Okay, let me check this macaroni. Yep, it's done. We are done, people. Let's take this over and add cheese. Wow, look at that. Is Doesn't that look yummy? Ooh, it smells delicious. And let's remove them. Those bay leaves are not edible. At least not in this form. Make sure it's well mixed before you add in all that creamy, yummy cheesiness. You can add any cheese you like at this point. Since I'm making mine a little bit spicy, I'm going to add half jack, cheddar jack, and then half regular cheddar cheese. We're going to use a cup and just, or more. It's up to your, I'm probably going to use more than a cup because I want it cheesy. So look, a heaping cup. And keep in mind that when I use the Rotel chilies, I use the, the Rotel with green chilies. Normally, the recipe calls for you to just use plain diced chilies. And if you don't like it spicy, just use the plain diced chilies. And I use spicy paprika. You can use regular paprika or no paprika. So let's mix this up. I would say that's about a cup and a half. And this is going to give your goulash, or some of you would probably say chili mat, <laughs> if it was if it was your hamburger helper. We're going to give it extra creaminess. Then we're going to try it out. Okay, let's plate this up. It smells wonderful. And if you're wondering why I look hot, it's because my air conditioning went out. And I guess I learned today that you don't want to do hot dishes when you have no air conditioning. Hopefully their guy will be here this afternoon. Anyway, we're going to try this out. It's kind of still hot, so I'm not going in anyway for you. Definitely better than the box store hamburger helper. This is the real deal. Delicious. So. I'm going to leave, put the recipe in the description. If you want to see more in my kitchen, don't forget, like, subscribe, share, and keep cooking in Deb's Kitchen.